Hey there, Danielle Matthews here. I'm coming to you live from Florida. And if you're new to my content, I absolutely love to help women on a healing journey to restore their cellular health, to release past trauma, and to reset their nervous system. It is all about mental, emotional, spiritual healing. And um, part of that is learning, right? Learning to shift the inner world and your mind. And so I have book club, uh, which is free for all of us to join and discuss and connect with one another. Uh, we are on our third book and we meet every single Monday. So if you're joining in live with me, let me know when you arrive. Uh, we'll get started here in a moment. But the book that we're reading um, right now currently is The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And this is a fabulous book. I picked this book up, gosh, five years ago. I remember because my dog, <laughs> I had just gotten Bodie and uh, he found this book and he chewed the whole thing. So this is my second copy uh, of the book. And uh, this is one that, you know, five years ago hit home and now through all of the growth and spiritual development and study I've done, uh, I wanted to come back to it uh, because I really think that this book just puts it in a very practical, simple way um, so much. And um, hey, Angela. And with this chapter that we just read, we're on chapter five right now. So whether you're reading the whole book with us or you're just joining in for this particular conversation, this is going to be a good one. <laughs> so hey, Tina. Uh, good to see you. Uh, hey, Angela. So uh, let me know, guys, when you join in. Uh, it's helpful for me to know when, when you pop in, so I know what you're here. But I feel like it's probably okay to kind of get started. So this chapter was all about infinite energy. And it's about that energy that you feel. Like, have you ever just felt so enthusiastic, so happy? It's like this inner wellspring of energy that comes out. Um, hey, Karen. And, you know, he's kind of talking about like, well, where's that come from? Um, so a couple of questions he asked. And then I want to ask you guys, have you ever thought about what energy allows you to think? What energy allows you to have feelings? What energy allows you to actually move the body? Hey, Fritz, good to see you. Uh, has anyone ever thought about that? Like, I, I don't think I've ever stopped and actually like thought like what energy does allow me to think and what energy does allow me to feel. Um, but it takes energy, right? Like if you're having a conversation and all of a sudden this thought pops in and it's a not helpful thought, like how many of us put a one in the chat if you've ever had a not helpful thought pop in, right? Uh, and it takes energy to hold that thought at bay, right? To be able to get that thought to not interrupt what you're currently trying to do. Fritz can relate to me. Okay, I'm not the only one. Yeah, it happens. Or what about a thought that like you have a thought and then you feel it like starting to drift away and you're like, no, 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 come back here. And you're like, it takes energy to go after it, right? It does. It literally takes brain power to go after that. What is that brain power? Or he talks about maybe emotions. Have you ever had to push an emotion aside? You know, maybe you're having to take care of something. Good morning, Charlotte. Thanks for joining. Uh, maybe you're having to take care of something and this emotion comes up but you're like, I need to move forward with what I'm doing. I don't have time to have this emotional like reaction to everything, All right? Um, in the Yun method, it's called intuitive noticing energy. Nice, Lou, I've not heard it called that before, but yeah, that's what he calls infinite energy. The same stuff, right? I think every spiritual teaching talks about this stuff and it's like, well, we gotta study it. Why don't we study it? <laughs> you know, whatever you wanna call it, everybody agrees it exists. Uh, whether you're calling it the intuitive noticing energy or you're calling it the infinite energy or you're calling it chi or you're calling it prana or you're calling it shakti or you're calling whatever you're calling it. Uh, we know that it exists. And so the conversation is, well, what are we using that energy for and how do we get more of it? You know, and if we're using it to manage our emotions, it can take a lot of energy. Like it takes a lot of energy to hold an emotion or say like something traumatic happens you know, and this energy event that was flowing through was really intense for your system, you'll shut it down. It's like your system throws a circuit breaker and says, whoop, we can't do that. Well, that energy is not created or destroyed. That energy still circulates in the system. And then guess what? It takes even more energy to hold that thing back, to hold down the trauma, to push back these emotions we don't want to have. It takes energy to sweep it under the rug and keep it under the rug. Uh, and that energy is, that's your life force, right? And it does so much, which we're going to talk about, about in, in, in this chapter. So, 
He says, just as everything that happens outside in the physical world requires energy, everything that happens inside also requires an expenditure of energy. Um, I think about it, I've always had this like analogy of money. Like there's, I literally view it as like maybe at the bottom of your spine, <laughs> okay? There's like this, this bowl of energy and it gets spent on digestion, on healing the cut that you just had, on breathing, on, you know, now eliminating your food. Like it gets spent on all of this stuff. You're spending money all the time, this energy that you have. And it also can just be leaking if you're having to deal with emotions and thoughts and all this stuff. Like it's also that same energy that's meant to like heal your body can also be leaked out dealing with thoughts and emotions and all that stuff. Um, so it'd be nice if we could just have an infinite supply of this energy. And that's what he talks about in this chapter. That's what we're going to get at is how do we just have infinite money? <laughs> energy that is just like a wellspring coming up from inside of us. Like who's in for, in for that? Like high five me, put a five in the chat. Who wants to know how to do that? Um, I think it's a fabulous thing, right? But it's kind of starts with, well, where does all this energy come from? Why is the energy there sometimes and other times you feel completely drained, right? How come it's there sometimes, not there sometimes? Have you ever noticed that when you are mentally and emotionally drained, food doesn't help much? And sometimes you're so ecstatic and excited and inspired, you don't even want to eat. So what he's saying is this isn't the energy that comes from food. It's not from caloric intake, all right? That's not where this is coming from. Uh, this energy we are discussing does not come from the calories your body burns from food. He gave the example of, and maybe we've all been there, right? That he gave the example of, okay, you're in your 20s and you've just been dumped by your boyfriend, girlfriend. And so you're just in your apartment and you don't want to do anything, right? And you just, you're not cleaning, you're just laying in bed, people are inviting you out, you don't have the energy to go out, like you just don't want to do anything. And then two months down the road of all of this, they call back the girlfriend or boyfriend or broke up and says, I'm so sorry, I made a mistake. Could you take me back? I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. And all of a sudden, the wellspring of energy is there that hadn't been there forever. Now all of a sudden out of nowhere comes back. Like, how is it possible? <laughs> you know, where does it come from? How did it do that? How did it do that? I love that analogy because I thought, well, most people, you know, have been through a breakup and they know what that feels like and then what it feels like when it comes back. So he says, you know, where exactly did all the energy come from? There was no sudden change in the eating or sleeping habits, right? All the stuff that we typically do for our health doesn't impact this energy, all right? It doesn't come from food. It doesn't come from sleep. This is an energy that is always available to you, all right? So why don't you feel it sometimes? Okay, why don't you feel it sometimes? You don't feel it because you close off your heart. And he says the key is, and guys, feel this intuitively, right? When you close off your heart or you close your mind, you hide in the darkness within you where there's no light, where there's no energy, there's nothing flowing. The energy is still there, but you can't get to it. He says it's called being blocked. And now in um, the yogic tradition, which I study a lot of, they talk about the koshas. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but it's like when you come into existence, you know, it's kind of like uh, there's ether and then maybe you've got air and then steam and then the liquid and then ice, right? The physical ice you see. So our physical bodies we see, but there's also like the liquid energy body. There's um, there's steam, which is like the mental body. There's, there's the ether, which is your wisdom body, right? There, there's all this stuff that is around us. The yogis look at it. I'm giving a terrible job of explaining this. But all of this to say, there is an energy body surrounding the physical body that has to hook in. It's what gives life. The way the yogis talk about it, they call it the prana. The prana that is all around has to hook in to give life to this physical body. And it does it through the chakra system. And I don't know if anyone is aware of this, but the heart center is the main center where energy flows in. And then from the heart, it's sent up to the energy centers above and it's sent down to the energy centers below. But it's the heart that is the integrator. And what he's saying is that this is where you can close off. If there is a blockage here in this energy center, 
then that energy that's trying to flow in, you're literally blocking yourself from it. And so it feels dark, you feel drained, you have no energy. All right, who can relate to this? Put a one in the chat if you've ever been in a situation where you've been, it feels like you're cut off from energy. Like they're just like, I'm lethargic, I don't care, nothing feels good, I'm depressed. Like I've been there, I've certainly been there in my life. Well, what they say, what the yogis would say, and what he's saying is you have a closed heart. You've, you've shut off the avenue through which the energy can flow in. All right, Lou's saying it comes from the universe. I've experienced when doing um, massages, uh, they didn't drain me, but I have felt it flow through the crown chakra, rejuvenating in the solar plexus, all through my hands. I would get energized from it. Yeah, when you are open to this energy, it literally can fill you up and flow through you. So it will lift other people and not drain you at all. Not drain you in the slightest. Um, Karen saying, is that the tingling I feel when practicing my yoga nidra, the outside energy? Uh, could be. So in yoga nidra, when you go and drop below the mind, the energy body is no longer being uh, told what to do and where to go by the mind, right? Because the mind often takes the energy and spends it where it wants. But when you shut the mind off in yoga nidra and you're quiet, that energy is freed up to do its work. So sometimes tingling sensations that you might feel in a yoga nidra, Karen, are the energy maybe moving through a blockage in your own system. So you're feeling the blockage being removed. And that's the tingling. It can be felt as streaming, as pulsing, sometimes as a stabbing pain. Like you'll feel when energy is moving through blockages because we all have blocks. Um, and they can live in all places in the body. But the main block that can happen is in the heart. Uh, and we have control. We can open and close our heart. And that's the secret, right? So um, hopefully that, that makes sense, uh, how I answered that for you, Karen. But let me know if not. So where was I? I think we're on page 43. Um, yeah, so if you've ever been in love with someone, right? This is like the beauty of when you first fall in love, right? The magic of the beginning. Your heart is blown open. Like, this person could do no wrong. They're the most amazing human being. Like, everything is wonderful. Like, that is because your heart is so open that everything feels that way. Like, everyone feels wonderful. Everything feels wonderful. But then the moment that person does something that doesn't feel good or is a little bit not the way that you would prefer it, the next time you see them, it doesn't feel as good. Why? Because you closed your heart a little bit. It's so funny because we blame the external world. We say, oh, because they did this or that happened, now I feel bad. And the truth is, you chose to close your heart. And you don't have to choose to, cho choose to close it. You can choose to keep it open. Okay? You can absolutely choose to keep it open. Um, think about when somebody apologizes, right? So then the person apologizes to you and all of a sudden, oh, I feel better. Well, what happened? You chose to open your heart. Now, you waited for the apology to open your heart, but what he's saying and what I'm saying is, guys, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you can live with an open heart no matter what. You don't have to wait for an external circumstance or someone to treat you the right way or whatever. You can have your heart open under all conditions. That is actually the trick to living a life where you're filled with energy, filled with excitement, and filled with enthusiasm all the time and filled with joy, and that everything just seems wonderful because your heart's open. Right, And as Lou was saying, you will then have the energy to overflow to other people when your heart is open. And you have that choice. Like, it is a choice. But most of us are conditioned in society. With, oh, you know, you got hurt. Oh, this person needs to do this so that you can feel better. And the truth is, you can take your power back. And you can decide that you want to have an open heart and you just open it. That's all you do. You just open it. So, um, he, he was asking... I love on page 44, he says, how many times have you experienced these dynamics in your life where you've had an open heart, someone did something, it shut down, someone apologized, now you open it again, right? And you're like ping-ponging along, you know, and then we're trying to manage other people so they don't hurt us or manage situations so we don't get hurt again. But the truth is, you closed your heart, you hurt yourself. You didn't have to. You can have an open heart and just be receptive to all. Not saying you condone it, not saying to get walked all over, but you can just receive it. 
All right, this is where spiritual teachings people like fall flat, but this is everything, okay? This is literally everything. Um, he says, you should know about this energy because it's yours. It is your birthright and it's unlimited. You can call upon it at any time. It has nothing to do with age. Energy can't get old, it can't get tired, and it doesn't need food, all right? It doesn't need any of those things. It doesn't matter your age. I don't care if you're in your 70s, your 80s, or you're in your teens. It doesn't matter your age, all right? This is available to you. And he says, what it needs, though, is an openness and receptivity. This energy is equally available to everyone. It's like the sun. It shines on all of us. We all have access to it. But when you close, the energy stops flowing. And when you open, all of the energy rushes back inside of you. True spiritual teachings are about this energy and how to open it. In Inner Management Mastery, this is what we talk about in the last week of the program, right? This is what it all, the big culmination of it all. Guys, this is the secret to life. Learning that this energy exists, learning how to work with it inside of your body, and then learning how to keep it flowing to you all the time. And that is through having an open heart, right? So do you want this energy in your life? If so, he says it's a very simple way to do it. The method is simple. Just stay open. You get it by never closing. All right? You get it by never, ever closing. But closing is a habit. Like, think about like something that I used to habitually do. When I met new people, I sort of like shrank back. I was not interested, right? I thought it was overwhelming. I didn't know what to say. I felt awkward. I thought people were judging me. I didn't, I wasn't comfortable with people. Might be shocking for some of you because you met me out and about, but no, I used to not be comfortable with people at all. I had a very closed heart. Okay. I I do a downward facing triangle. We'll talk about that later, but I had a very closed heart. So when new people would come up, I was like, get me out of this situation as soon as I can. Right. And it took practice. Like I would force myself because I wanted to meet people, right? Out of necessity at the time, I was growing a business, but now I just love meeting new people. So I was wanting to do that. So I was putting myself in situations where I had to, and I had to open my heart. I had to be receptive. I had to learn how to connect with people. And I had the power to control whether I got fearful and wanted to step back or I was open and full of energy and thus people were actually attracted to and wanted to talk to me. You have that power. All right, you can make the choice. It lives inside of you. And this is, this is really key, right? We are programmed to open and close based on our past experiences. This is really, really key. Impressions from the past still live inside of us, and they can get stimulated by different events. And if they are negative impressions, then we tend to close. If they are positive impressions, then we tend to open. Think about certain smells certain locations. Um, They will trigger things inside of you that will open or close your heart. What did Meffert say? Do you find that Bodhi helps you uh, to keep your heart open even more? My dogs do. Yes. And you know what, Fritz? That's why every single morning, like I get out of bed and I see my dog. (laughs) Um, And he is just That dog has an open heart all the time. Like he is beyond excited to see me, wagging his tail, getting his toys, like, and it bursts my heart open. For it's perfectly, perfect example. Like if you want to know what it feels like to have an open heart, go be around a pet. Okay? They, they open your heart. All right? And what I'm saying is that feeling, so that feeling that I have every single morning with Bodhi and that Fritz has with his, how many dogs you have? Four or five? He has so many dogs. Um, That you have with your dogs It's like, that is the feeling that you can have in every single moment of life. That feeling that you get, you have three. Maybe you were watching your son's dogs. Didn't you have more at one time? Um, So when you're around all of that and, and you can get it out in nature. Yeah, it's also why I go on a walk in nature every morning because it just opens my heart. I do everything I can in the morning to keep my heart open. And I can't show you because I'm on Instagram on my phone. But literally the screensaver on my phone says, open your heart. And then the next piece says, see the divine in everyone. Because that's the reminder. Like how many times do I check my phone? It's always beeping and going off and blah, 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 right? The thing is binging all the time. And so I look at it all the time. And now what do I see when I look at it? Open your heart, open your heart, open your heart. Guys, that's the reminder. 
because that's everything. I'm telling you, it's the key to life. If you want to be attractive, if you want people attracted to you, I'm talking to the business owners that are listening right now, um, or even just in your professional life, hell, your personal life too. If you want to attract attractive people, you must be attractive. How do you be attractive? Open heart. I'm not talking about physical appearance. Like, yeah, you want to make sure you don't look crazy. But energetically, you do it through having an open heart. People will be attracted to you energetically. They won't even know why. They won't even know why. But when your heart is open, there is something about you that people, it's an intangible, people can't put their finger on it, but they want to be around you. They like how they feel. Can you think about somebody that you like to be around that when you leave them, you feel energized? Put their name in the chat. Like for me, my spiritual teacher, both of them. When I'm around them, it's like, I just feel amazing. Just being in their presence, it makes me lifted. It lifts me up. Why? Because their hearts are open. Because they have this energy flowing to and through them that's literally shifting the room and the vibration in the room. And I level set to them, which is a pull up. <laughs> and it feels amazing, right? Uh, Tyler Norton in ASEA, he's another one that I, when I level set with him, he's got an open heart. I love that you just tagged Nelda. Yes, Nelda does too. She's got beautiful energy. Absolutely beautiful energy. Um, it You'll feel it when you're around these people and you just want to be around them more, right? You just want it. It just feels so good. So find those people in your life <laughs> and keep them close um, and then become one, right? That's what we're talking about here. Uh, it's how, how to become that. So um, he says, we are programmed based on our past impressions such that all kinds of things can cause us to open and close. And if you pay attention, you will see it happen regularly throughout the day. I mean, guys, just look at your day. So far today, it's noon where I am. My heart has opened and closed multiple times today. Multiple times. And each time it started to close, I reset it. I went and pet my dog. I went and stepped outside. I took a deep breath. Like the moment you feel these things happening, learn to reset it. It's a constant because we have to unprogram what's been programmed into us. Um, how many of you have had to open and close already today, <laughs> right? I'm sure it's happened to all of us and it will continue to, right? It's part of the human journey. So he says, anytime you start to close, ask yourself whether you really want to cut off the energy supply. Is it really worth cutting off the energy flow? Like you're in control. You're saying this is worth it. I'm just going to get angry and feel terrible. Or you're saying it's not worth it. Like I'm going to keep my heart open despite this person being ridiculous, right? I'm just going to choose to. All right. This is a really important thing to understand. So we have this innate tendency to close because we think it will protect us. This is a key point. By closing your heart, it does not really protect you from anything. And in fact, it cuts you off from your source of energy. So in the end, it only serves to lock you inside. So this wall you think you're putting up to protect your heart so you don't get hurt because you feel vulnerable and the world can be intense. So you put up a wall. All you're actually doing is locking yourself inside of a room. You've cut yourself off now from the energy supply. You've cut yourself off from people like it's not a good situation that you've gotten yourself into. That's not what you want. How many people can relate to this? Like you just, oh, I walled myself off, right? So many people, I've worked with a lot of students that they have big walls, big walls up and we have to slowly chip them down, slowly, you know, it's okay, release the wall, open your heart. When you open your heart, the wall just melts, right? You don't even have to chip at it. <laughs> the thing just goes uh, when you have an open heart and that's the key. Right, it's the key to it all. So what you'll find is that the only thing you really want from life is to feel enthusiasm, joy, and love. If you can feel that all the time, then who cares what happens outside? If you can always feel up, if you can always feel excited about the experience of the moment, then it doesn't make any difference, right? We, I was just talking with Inner Management Mastery students uh, yesterday. I, I brought this out and I, I painted the back of it with nail polish because it's a yin yang. Right? And life, it's like, oh, it's up and down and it's good and bad and there's hot and cold and there's just, it's a mess. Life is a mess. And our mind 
chooses one over the other, right? It says this is good and this is bad. And so when this happens, it's bad and we close off. But what the teaching here is, is to say, no, just be okay with it all. If you can just embrace the entirety of it, all right, have an open heart to all of it, you're going to be okay, whatever is showing up in life, the quote good and the quote bad, knowing that, hey, it's all here for a reason, it's all serving a purpose, and it's serving me. And if I can have an open heart to it all, it's called being in uh, manifest unity here in this world in unity, one with love. That's the key. And how do you do it? Open your heart. How do you open your heart? Don't close it. <laughs> okay? Like, I love how practical this book is. He's like, how do you do it? Well, you just you just don't close it. Like, period, end of sentence. Like, that's all you need to do. Um, how you learn to stay open is up to you. But the ultimate trick, he says, is not to close it. So he gives you two, two things you can try. Um, one, he says, no, uh, just saying to yourself, I'm going to relax, I'm going to let this situation take place, and I'm going to be there with it. So when something arises that perhaps you don't like or isn't in alignment with what you're wanting, you just stop and say, you know what? I'm going to rest with what's here. I don't like what's going on, I don't condone what's going on, but I'm going to open my heart to it so I don't have inner resistance, so I don't shut myself off. And I'm going to let it be here. And if you keep an open heart, you'll very likely see a path forward that you can take despite what's going on. All right. The other option, right, he says you will embrace life with all your heart and soul if you live this way. You're only limited by your ability to stay open. The other thing you can try to do is to pay attention when you feel love and enthusiasm, like with your dog, right, <laughs> uh, or out in nature. And put other things in the chat. Other things that make you feel enthusiasm and love. Maybe it's listening to music, right? Maybe it's eating certain foods. Maybe it's hanging out with certain people. Maybe it's going to a concert. Maybe it's um, cooking in a certain way. Maybe it's certain types of conversations. Maybe it's reading. Like, what is it that opens your heart? He says, pay attention when you feel love and enthusiasm. And then ask yourself, why can't I feel this way all the time? Because it's an inner thing. Understand this, guys. It's not the external thing that's bringing it to you, right? Anna says dancing. Dancing is when you allow yourself to open your heart. But guess what? You can open your heart without having to dance. You can just choose to be in that space. Dancing is when you feel it, but you can feel that all the time. That's the trick. That's the trick. So the answer is obvious. It only goes away if you choose to close. You feel love until somebody says something you don't like, and then you give up the love. You feel enthused about your job until someone criticizes something, and then you want to quit. But guys, it's your choice. Yeah, skiing with Tina and singing. Yeah, right? These are times when your heart is open. Well, guess what? Get off the mountain and keep it open, right? Sing the song and then keep the heart open. These are the things that you have control over. These are the things that you can do. You're allowing your mind to create triggers otherwise, and your mind will then open and close your heart. But if you can let go of that, if you can dare to be different than the rest of the population that thinks it's okay to get angry, that thinks it's okay to blame someone externally, that wants to be a victim to whatever's going on, you can live that way, but you're going to be miserable. And what he's given you is the secret. And what we're saying is just open your heart. The more you stay open, the more this energy flow just builds up, right? And he says, and I love this, we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but he says, you can become a source of light for all of those around you. You can even affect the health of your own body when you're open to this energy flow. Guys, when you stay open and you have an open heart, the reason I keep doing this is that the symbol um, for the, the heart energy center uh, it's like an upward facing triangle and a downward facing triangle. And this is a powerful symbol in a lot of faiths. <laughs> okay. Uh, when you interlay that, right? It looks like a star. Um, when the triangle is down, energy is moving down and out. It's not filling you. It's being drained. When you can have an open heart, so the upward facing triangle, that energy can move inward, upward. You can be connected to this wellspring of energy. And it's incredible what you feel. And when you're connected and when you keep your heart open, it just flows and flows and you will lift others. 
Great leaders, great speakers, great teachers have this alignment. They have an open heart. That's why you're drawn to them. All right, that person that I had you think of, you're drawn to them because they have an open heart, because this energy is coming through them. It's not even them. It's like the infinite, right? It's the divine, or as um, Wayne Dyer talks about it in his book, right? It's, it's, it's intention. Like, this is the field <laughs> flowing through you. Um, Karen says, I sing Let It Go, Let It Go, the Disney song. Yeah, I, I do that sometimes, too. And when my heart wants to close, sometimes I'll, I'll literally sing that exact, let it go let it go right and you do just let it go and just keep your heart open and the singing helps keep the heart open guys it's not hard you know it's it's pretty simple what we're sharing but it can be difficult when something happens that you really don't like so practice on the little things practice on the little things have an open heart the whole time at the grocery store the whole time driving no matter what anybody's doing or what anybody's saying practice on those little things he says the most important thing in life is your inner energy if you're always tired and never enthused, then life is no fun. But if you're always inspired and you're always filled with energy, then every minute of every day is an exciting experience. And I don't know about you, but that's the life I want to live. <laughs> so uh, that's all it is. I don't think we need to even read the rest of the book. <laughs> he just, he gave it to us right there. Um, but of course, there's probably more. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep reading. Uh, next week, we'll do chapter six, The Secrets of the Spiritual Heart. Uh, is what he calls chapter six. And it's maybe a little bit longer. Eh, not so much. It goes till page 58. All right. So we'll read chapter six. If you've got any questions, comment in the Telegram group. Uh, share this with a friend, guys. Tag somebody that needs to hear this. Tag somebody that you believe has an open heart. Uh, get this message out in front of people. This is this is the secret. And I, for one, want to live in a world where everyone's got an open heart, where I can be energized no matter who I meet and who I come across. So uh, it all starts with, with this knowledge and then implementing it. So I appreciate you guys. Uh, have a beautiful week. This is a great way to start the week. Hopefully it's opened your hearts. And uh, I'll talk with you all soon.